I have in my hand here what I think is actually the most important driver test and battle of 2024. Now hear me out. I have the Wilson Dyna Power Driver, which is arguably the best driver in terms of value for money in 2024, up against the driver that's gonna be right at the top end of the spectrum, the Titleist GT3. Yes, the Titleist GT3. So let's put this to the test. Let's not only see what the numbers we get, as I've been fitted for both of these drivers, but also what actually happens in real life. So we're gonna play a couple of holes, hit around eight shots. As I even said myself, how undervalued the Wilson Dynapower driver was. Like, I thought it was an absolute steal. I still think it's an absolute steal, which is why I'm so interested in this test. Now, before we start hitting some shots, let's have a look at them. So I guess let's start with the Wilson Dynapower. Now, the things that are gonna stick out to you straight away is the fact that we've got a slight little bit of weight system and a 12 gram weight visible here on the back that's this weight just in here also on the crown you've got this sort of carbon effect that's almost like a separate insert into the rest of the driver chassis and it looks a lot well i guess what we would expect from a driver in 2024 whereas and this is one of my i'm going to be honest concerns when first tightly showed me this driver is it looks very much like a tightless driver but they assured me that this is exactly what they wanted to achieve a traditional tightless look with modern technology, an all-round good driver that's not just oh, everyone's saying it's the year of forgiving drivers, this is the year Titleist are saying for all-rounders in their opinion. So on the crown, very minimalistic, just a slight GT logo, a star contrast to what you have on the Wilson. And on the bottom, again, very minimalistic and this weighting system a little closer towards the face that's this here now this is the gt3 model so the other models will differ slightly but i'll be honest what really got me interested in these two drivers is the faces not the technology just the look and the depth of both of them like look at those right there they're so similar aren't they in terms of design sort of similar groove pattern but depth from the top to the bottom here is the Titleist on the bottom and here is the Wilson on the top. And that's the drivers there, side by side. Very modern look, very, very traditional, minimalistic. So let's now really dive into that performance. We'll start with hitting one with the Wilson, then one with the GT, one with the Wilson, one with the GT. I'm not only looking like, as I say, at the numbers here, but also how does it perform on the course? So be honest with me, which one do you prefer the look of? Wilson or the new GT3? I think Titleist have done a great job. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Okay, first ball away, Wilson. The line here is that sort of grassy mound that's sort of coming down on that sort of side there. Hopefully where this is about to go. Oh, yes, please. Tell you what, that GT's got a lot to live up to because that was absolutely cream crackered. And I mean like center of the center. You can even see the T mark out of here. Now also don't forget, I'm actually using this Titleist driver right now. I've replaced it from my QI10 and the Ping G430 10K, which I have been gaming recently. Right, these are the numbers. 247 carry, 1980 spin, which is quite low, quite low that. 105.9 club, 155 ball, Interesting, and then can we just get a total number here? Total 284. Let's also just play that clip back again. What did you think of that sound? It was a lot duller and I guess more carbon sounding. I know that sounds bizarre, but when you hear the difference in this tight list which is coming up, you will hear the difference in the acoustics. Like, I can assure you, like, they sound totally different. And I actually think that has a big thing to do with when you're buying a driver. Do you like the sound of it? This amount of people, right, see if you can relate to this. The amount of people that have said they've never bought a ping because it sounds Horrendous. I think if I had a pound for every time that someone told me that, I'd be a blooming millionaire. Okay, so let's hit now one away with the tight list. Now, the numbers that I was getting was 164 ball speeds when I was testing this out on the course. I guess the question is, can I get anywhere close to that out here on the golf course? So remind you of that carry number. We had a 155 ball speed, but a 247 carry, a 1.9 spin. I thought I middled that as well. Now, again, we're not just bothered about numbers. Are we getting a ball that we can trust 
fully out on this golf course. Now I have to say, this does feel different. It's a little bit longer as well. I will add that because when I got fitted for this, surprisingly they were like, Alex, you can go a little longer on that shaft. This is more stable. I was like, whoa, usually I'm a lot shorter. Looks so different behind the ball. I'll be honest with you, you've got to see this in a minute behind the ball. Oh, that looks like it's in the air for ages. Bit off balance, not gonna lie. God, that was a good hit. That was a good, good hit. You know what though? Again, I wanna say this, this was out the middle. And I wrote Cal on that ball, by the way, um, so we can see where it actually finishes down the fairway. I'll do some markings on this one, so again, you can see the difference actually in play, but here are the numbers. Could you hear the difference in sound? Let's play that again. Different, right? Noticeably higher launch. Felt like it's in the air longer. And here are the numbers. Not too much longer in carry. A little more spin, which is which my reason why it stayed in the air a little longer. Club head speed. Wow, that is a jump. But you know what? Not much more. Ball speed. Okay, they're only the first two shots. Right now, there's about four yards in it in carry. And there's a one and a half miles an hour in it in ball speed but quite a lot more in club head speed. And it will be interesting to see where they have finished. At the end of the day, numbers are great, but this channel's about like practical tests that we can all do and where the actual ball finishes. So just so you know, I put a little orange dot on this gold ball, which will hit with the tight list. And here you go. That's what they look like down behind the ball. I would say the tight list looks a little on the smaller side, the Wilson looks a little on the bigger side. Maybe it's that contrast between the carbon that gives it that effect. As far as I'm aware, these are the same size CC head. Obviously slightly different shaping. In terms of accuracy right now, there is not much in it. Okay, let's hit this one away with the Wilson. Again, same line, they were both spot on to be fair. <sighs> Notice to be lower, and again, I wanna repeat that different sound. So well, that's down the fast alley that. That was maybe a little toe side of middle, but you know what? That is gonna be interesting to see where that finishes. <laughs> and now, orange dot for the tight list. Here we go. Second ball, tight list. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm hitting it good this morning. You know, we just have one of them days, go. Oh, that was like a carbon copy down the fast alley. <sighs> Look at these numbers. This is what I found in the fitting. This is what I found. Look at this, a 113.9 club speed, 162.7 ball speed, 255 carry, 294 total. But as I keep saying, these numbers are all well and good, but, and there's a huge but. Where did they finish down? That fairway. Let's go and have a look. Remember, orange dot and cal for the GT hits and just nothing on the other hits for the Wilson. Okay, so we're driving down here now. I can see two golf balls literally next to each other here on the right. And then over there, look at those two. Look at this grouping. One, two, and then zoom in down here. I wonder which one's just pipped it. So do you, just for perspective, we teed off all the way down there. So if I just drive it like that for the rest of the season on this hole, sign me up. Okay, no markings. This golf ball right here was the Wilson. Golf ball right here in my left hand has Cal on it. So we just been pipped. Tight list has just pipped it. And let's now just take a few steps further forward. Orange dot, no markings. Orange dot, so it's a dead heat. It is a dead heat right now. Look, orange dot. No markings. First shot was won by the GT. Second shots, which were straight down this fast alley, was won by the Wilson. Now I know the bounce has a lot to do with that. Numbers wise, we saw that the Wilson was a little bit on the slower side in terms of club head speed and ball speed, and a little bit less in carry. And I will add this, the spin was a little lower. So for me, I prefer a ball flight that's a little higher. It just looks like the GT hangs in the air a little more, but that's sort of just down to personal preference right now. I've got four more drives to go and hit, so let's go and get it done. So let's hit two more away. Now remember, the Wilson is a fraction of the price of the GT driver. A fraction. So the fact that this is close right now is really quite interesting. So again, let's go to the 15th hole here at Mottram Hall. I'm gonna start by hitting the GT. Again, I've got Cal on the ball and the orange dot. First hit away, a little bit up the right, but I'll be honest, I take that drive every single time. 
and it was absolutely smoked. Next up, I hit one away with the Wilson. Now what's really quite interesting is I'm seeing this Wilson spin a lot less, a lot lower, and you could almost see like sort of drop out the air a little bit. Now, interestingly, on that point, usually I'm less accurate, but that's a pretty damn good drive. Okay, last two, let's go into some detailed numbers. But right now, this is sort of neck and neck right now. Neck and neck. I think what this comes down to is obviously a bit of price, but also which one do you prefer the look of? Which one do you prefer the look of? Let's carry on with the Wilson in hand. Again, I'm gonna shoot down this fairway so you can see. Right, where they finished. Okay, Wilson driver, just feel heavier this head. I mean, that might just be a placebo, but yeah, okay, come on. Oh, a little bit out of the heel. Wow, that's going off sideways right there. Oh, straight in that tree. I mean, that is a serious members bounce that has come out. I'll show you these numbers, but I'll be honest with you, <laughs> I wasn't the greatest hit. So we had a 279 total, 107 club bed speed, 0.8, a 158.5 ball speed, and a 242 carry, 2-3 spin. Again, this driver is on the lower spinning side. Maybe that's to do with the shaft, but again, I want to reiterate, I have been fitted for both of these drivers. Right, final one away with the GT. Let's dive into these numbers. Come on, good swings here, Alex. Good swings. I find it hard not to keep hitting it harder and harder in these tests. Gotta stay good rhythm. Wow, that is a good hit. Wow. Wow, we. 255 carry, 162.7 ball speed, 110 club head speed, and a 293 total. So let's jump down the fairway. We've hit four with each now. Noticeably, the tightest goes a bit higher. For me, it stays in the air a little longer and feels a little bit easier to control. Do you get that vibe? I also prefer the sound. Again, this is just totally forgetting price point right now. Totally forgetting price point. In terms of numbers, the Titleist does edge it slightly. We've not had any ball speeds in the 162s and above, or even the 160s with the Wilson. Whereas as you've seen right here, we have pretty consistently with the Titleist. Let's just jump down the fairway. I know we hit a bad one with the Wilson, but I want to leave it in there. This is like honest reviews. Actually, what happened? Oh, a little bit out of the heel on the golf course. So come on, let's go and see where both those good ones finished. That good one from the Wilson and those two good ones from the GT. Them, by the way, are what you call tree marks as we hit that tree right there. The others are somewhere in that space there. So I've just parked the buggy up. We teed off from there and I can see a couple of golf balls straight in front of me and one just here. So let's have a look which golf ball this is. This is gonna be interesting. This has an orange dot. And the other two, which are straight in line right here. One, two, let's see. I'm a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Which side should I go first? In fact, let me know down below again, which driver ball flight, which look, which overall package you are preferring. Let's go this one. This ha has Cal on it, so which makes this the Titleist. And I'll be honest with you, I think the Titleist is just pipping it. And then this one right here has nothing on it, which means it's the Wilson. So overall, overall, overall it's super close. But I'm gonna say right now, the Titleist in my opinion, literally just pips it. But isn't that interesting? A driver at the fraction of the price that has been fitted can compete with what we're classing as a big boy in the market. A big boy in the market. Safe to say the Titleist is staying in the bag, but fair play to the Wilson driver. Thanks so much for watching.